Hi, it's Ben Shan. Really quick, funny story. I recorded this. This is my third time doing this. Uh, first time, it was 24 minutes long. Bad idea. Second time, the mic was off, and it turns out I've been uploading to my wife's account instead of mine. So here we go again. But I promise you, this is the best take. So um, second violin part of Bach double. I'm going to play it slowly, and then I'll just stop and explain things as I go. Get your violin out and uh, a pencil and um, print out the music. I put a link in the video information thing, and I promise now I'm actually going to start. Now you can either shift up to third position here, then shift back down, or you can stay in first position, I guess, if you want to. Now save your bow on these long notes, and stop your bow. You can stop your bow because the first violin is still playing and the sound is still going, so you won't, the audience will not be able to hear that. So back to measure eight, uh, seven. Now notice that I shifted down on measure eight on the open string. I used that to shift down. So it's a measure seven, um, last four sixteenth notes. Stop. Now shift up. Now you can either stay in position here, then come back down, or at measure 12 you can also shift down here, I'm not sure which one I'm going to do, uh, probably shift down, but we'll find out. Um, this is now measure 14. Now you can either extend up to a fourth finger here, or you can go on the E string. I prefer the fourth finger. It's harder, so if you find difficulty with that, you can just do it on the E string. But uh, Two ups. Fourth finger. I generally like doing the fourth finger on a lot of these long notes because it sounds less harsh than the open string. But when it's fast on a sixteenth note, then I generally am okay with using open strings periodically. Uh, let's see. Pick up to measure eighteen. Notice that I had a double up there. Now when you listen for the entrance, you'll hear the vi first violin go, and then that's that's you. That's when you're supposed to come in. So you hear, da, 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 da. Now here, you want to stop your bow in between each of the eighth notes. And that way you'll mask the sound, or rather you'll skip over the sound of the string crossing. Otherwise you hear, You'll hear remnants of that middle string. You don't want to do that. Now, when I'm shifting on measure 27, um, I'm using my first finger to go to third position first, and then using hand frame, which is basically when your hand is relaxed, your first finger and fourth finger on these two different strings should form an octave. So that if you were to go up like this, you would be able to retain that same hand frame, that same octave, so anytime that you shift up with your first finger, you know that your fourth finger on the next string over is going to create an octave. So um, I'm able to do that in measure 27 here. Sorry, I'm going too fast. Shift back down. Now here's half position at measure 29, so third finger. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that I can, don't have to 
uh, really think about hopping my second finger over. Otherwise, how, how are you going to hit the G, the second note of measure 29, if you're already using your second finger on the first note? So uh, to make it easier to visualize this, instead of it's much easier just to use set half position. Now use this open string, I'm doing it on purpose because I want to be able to shift up to third position for the, for the next note in measure 30. Now I'm using the fourth finger here to help me to get from G string to D string to A string. Here you want to just quickly go into, into half position for that, for that one B natural on second finger, then come right back out of it. Two fours here. Now this is where you take over the melody. So um, in measure 37, that last, those last four notes, the last three notes of that group should be crescendoing. So uh, because now you're the soloist. Now here I'm going to shift up to third position and then do three, two, two. This is measure 40, three, two, two. So. And then I'm doing a four here. So if you need to rewatch that, I'm more than happy to have you do that. Measure 42. Um, do this in the bottom half so you can retake on that long note. Again. Because it's much easier to play in the, at the frog area. It's just easier. You don't have to push or do anything fancy that you have to do at the tip. Um, we're now at measure um, 43. Now, same hand frame trick. Go up to second position. Then use this to be a, this next part, 2-2. Two, two. Now you're in first position. Now you're in half position. Okay, now I really should do that again. So uh, measure 43. Shift. 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 Now you're in first position. Stop. Stop. Shift. Now again, you have the solo. I'm going to do at C, measure 50, I'm going to do it slowly. See that where I at that very those last four sixteenth notes of measure 80, uh, 51, I shift it up, <clears throat> and it's a very small shift, but it is a shift. Now measure fifty three, uh, measure fifty two. Sorry, the second and third notes are both two, right? Right, and you don't want to have to hop your finger across the strings. So when you get to the first of those two notes, when you get to the D, this is note number two in measure fifty two. When you get to this note, put your your second finger down on both strings at the same time. Eh. Sorry, fifths are very difficult to tune. My finger tried to autocorrect. Anyways, it'll, it'll take some practice, but then this way you don't have to hop between strings. Shift down, 
shift up. Back to first position. Save your bow. Save. Stop. Save again. Stop. Two ups. Now retake down to the, the frog. Uh, second finger down on both strings. Shift down. Shift up. I'm going to do this one again very slowly. 61. So mostly second position. One caution: um, don't do the up bows as loudly as I just did it. Uh, go easy on the up bow so it doesn't sound like da 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 da. Don't want that sound. So let me try it again. I have here. Don't push the tempo. Measure sixty-three. Listen for the 16th notes. Right here, first finger down in both strings. Uh, measure 67, I did two, two sets of double ups. You don't have to do that, but that's just the way that I like to do it. Um, this is now pick up to measure to E to measure 69. Shift. First finger down on both strings. Shift back down using the open string. Clip this C pretty short so you can do the string crossing across two strings. Another up. Now save your bow because we have to slur it. Now the alternate fingering for that, measure 90, 76, which is a lot easier, is... So you could do that too. I, I like the first play because it sounds softer to me, or rather more, I don't know, uniform, but you can do it either way. So um, coming in to measure 80, uh, same thing as earlier. Da, 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 da. We know this part. And then uh, finally, measure 85, starting on, an, on a 4. I'm doing open strings because, it, frankly, at this point, we're almost at the end of this movement, so might as well be browed, uh, browed, browed. What am I trying to say? Brazen and proud? Anyways. So um, my counterpart here, the online piano and violin tutor, Allison Sparrow, is going to do the first violin part. So uh, look forward to that and um, check out her channel. She's got some great videos. And then we're going to put this together as a YouTube collab. So uh, I'm very excited and um, feeling kind of, kind of like I should do something wacky. So if you guys want to stick around for a second, I'm going to play this as fast as I can while keeping in tempo. Ready? Here we go.
how not to play the Bach double. Anyways, uh, hope you guys will subscribe after that. I don't know what else I can do except um, juggle or something. Bye!